Hello there and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with another The Hunter Classic video. Now, since the release of Puma's Into Timbergold Trails, I've been spending a lot of time on Timbergold, especially in the mountains, hunting these elusive big cats and also chasing for a 180 bighorn. I have shot a few Pumas and I have learned a little bit about how to hunt them and also had a, very, a few very close encounters where I have not seen the puma but it has seen me and uh, the noise is quite, if you're not expecting it, can be quite jump scary. Um, you just hear a growl and a hiss and then obviously it runs off or maybe even mock charges but you can't always see it. I still haven't seen one despite, like when it's done this despite having the calls from right beside me. But I have had a few nice bighorn, mainly 160s, and then these two ended up being my biggest bighorn rams yet. Both of these rams were 165 scoring rams, and they were right next to each other. This spot goes along, it's above the railway line, and then I head towards the edge of the map going up, and then there's this really open plain area that you can see for quite a long way in quite a few spots and this is my favourite spot to hunt these big rams. I am really really looking forward to eventually getting one for the lodge and also I'm doing quite well now with this rifle. I normally go and use bows and sit in a tree stand or a high seat or whatever but getting more experience with this rifle levelling it up and it is brilliant. As you can see, I dropped both of those rams exactly where they were, which was absolutely fantastic to see two big rams like that go down. i am obviously not got the spotting experience yet or tracking experience to see their score estimates. So if I see anything with big horns, it's getting shot purely because I want the XP, I want the GMs, anything that I can get at this point is great because I am still levelling up. I love the Hunter Classic and I would have played it a lot more but until I got this new laptop, gaming laptop that I have got now, my old laptop could not run Classic. Even on the most basic graphics it was so framey and I tried so hard with it. I did manage to get my leaderboard whitetail while I was playing on that old laptop, my 197 scoring whitetail buck. but. I couldn't really do stuff like running around in the mountains trying to shoot bighorn because it was almost impossible. However, now I can, I'm absolutely loving it and I'm putting a lot more time into this game because it is absolutely fabulous. It may not have the graphics that Call of the Wild has, however, to me this game does take the it takes the biscuit and is superior over Call of the Wild purely because I love the animal models so much. Like these big, these big horn with having such big thick horns, and also just something about classic makes it really super satisfying every time you harvest an animal. It doesn't have to be a big animal like in Call of the Wild, where oh you you want a diamond to make it worth shooting. In this game, shooting anything, shooting a, a you know a halfway decent animal is a good feeling. It's satisfying because it's more it's more of a challenge in the first place to get one. So I'm absolutely loving Classic. I'm definitely taking a break from Call of the Wild after that unfortunate multiplayer session that does appear that it was either glitched or possibly hacked by the host. It kind of just made me really sad because I tried so hard to get a diamond bear for so long and yeah, getting one and then it turning out to be probably glitched and the same with the rare duck being a diamond and probably glitched in some way. It's just kind of, I don't know, it kind of made me sad but Classic has it has the advantage in that way because I don't have to go on multiplayers to get new animals because classic every time you go on a map it's a new map it refreshes every single time every time you leave and then get a new you know join back onto the map again on your own maps they are refreshed everything is new 
And I love that. I absolutely love that because you never know what you're going to find. And that's what I was always doing in multiplayer for Call of the Wild. And so this, for me, in Classic, the fact I can do it in single player, I don't have to worry about getting kicked. I don't have to worry about disconnects or anything like that. It just makes me really happy. But here I was trying to see a puma that growled on top of me. The, it was really quite eerie because I was waiting, <laughs> waiting to try and find some bighorn. And then this hiss came from in the bush right next to me and I got the hunter mate out and the, the like blip, the circle blip that comes up on your hunter mate to show you where the call came from was on top of me. And you probably heard then. That's one of the noises they make that they seem to make when they're close and they know you're there. <laughs> and I had that a few times yesterday while trying to track this one in particular. It just seemed to keep... Do it didn't run for very far and then would stop and start growling. Like that. I can hear its footsteps. I could not hear those footsteps when I was actually playing. I just heard them then while I was recording. That was close! <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, gosh, I wish I'd known where it actually was. I, I crept around that area for so long. And then, in, this is in the same area, you can see there's a little X on my hunter mate from where I was tracking the other one. And I got a call from a different puma and I managed to sneak up to it out, out here on the rocks, which was really quite awesome. I was very, very happy to down another puma. If you don't know, these pumas give really, really good money. Like, even females or small males tend to give good money. This one didn't give that great, but it's they're really rewarding to hunt. The males, I think, actually give more. Yeah, quite a bit more, actually, looking back, because most of the males I've shot have given me 150 GMs, roughly. And then, I, again, was trying to go up into the mountains after falling, and I shot my first ever Rocky Mountain elk. I didn't really know what I was looking at. All I knew was I saw big antlers coming over the, the little hill, and it was a mountain. <laughs> as my first ever Rocky Mountain Elk. I didn't record the shot because I didn't, I didn't know. I just, I just got a random call from a Rocky Mountain Elk, thought, oh, okay, I'll try and take that as a bonus kill while moving between spots looking for pumas. And it was this monster bull. You can see the achievement unlocked in the top, top left corner there for one Rocky Mountain Elk. And it was this as my first. Trying to even get him into a good position for a trophy shot was hard, but you can see where he was, like, coming over this, like, little ridge, and when I shot him, I was below that, so all I saw was these huge antlers, and I just dropped him. And I just could not believe that for my first elk, first Rocky Mountain elk, it was this bull that chose to come and just... Oh, it was so awesome. Eventually managed to get him into a halfway decent trophy shot and I'm just ecstatic with that. Timbergold is definitely at the moment my favourite map because I love all of the species on it and I see myself hunting a lot more. So I then decided I was going to buy a tree stand and a tent and come and try and set up somewhere where I could shoot mule deer. Now, I decided that this spot, as you go, it's like on the road, it's the second turn in to the right as you're walking down the road, um, heading up to an information point. I thought, oh, this will be good because I can see a lot of mule deer tracks around here and it's got crossings from the river coming across to here. I did not know it was going to be this good of a spot. As you can see, I've got quite a good view all the way around, but you're going to see in a minute just how good a spot this actually turned out to be.
And here you can see 
I finally decided to get down from my stand after using up all of the arrows I had on me, plus one of the bullets from this rifle. And you can now see the absolute carnage that I created under this tree stand. <laughs> it was mostly bucks. I have to say, most of the animals I shot from this tree stand were bucks or bull elk. And I just couldn't believe it. I also saw a couple of male wolves. So I'm really, really considering buying either an electronic cooler. I'm, well, I could put an, ele uh, sorry, an electronic cooler. I could put that on the opposite side of the road and see if I can get any wolves there that I might be able to shoot. Or I might buy the the uh, calf cooler for the wolves. I'm not sure yet. But I definitely think I want to shoot some from here, considering how many I saw. And, like I said, look at how many bucks there are. <laughs> and how many antlers there are. There's a few does in there too. But just for sheer volume of animals. And this is not all of the animals that I even saw. I saw some bucks that came in, they got spooked by wolves. Like I said, I saw some wolves running around. I saw a few more elk. I just could not believe that the spot I chose, this was the first spot I chose, had this many animals. I had never shot mule deer like this ever. I'd shot maybe like, I don't know, a handful of mule deer before this. But you can see how they're like actually piled up on top of each other. And it was funny watching the AI struggle to walk over the the just pile of bodies that ended up being at this tree stand. I do believe I've shown the location, so if you want to put a tree stand here for yourself and maybe try and shoot some either elk or definitely mule deer or wolves, then uh, this is where I would probably try. Like I said, I, I just set up the tent and the tree stand jumped into the tree stand and this is what happened. So I don't know if it's going to be like this every time, I don't expect it to be, I expect it will probably be mostly females, but for a first, first run at putting a tree stand up anywhere, I was pretty pleased with this. So I hope you've enjoyed watching, um, I think there's just going to be a little bit more footage after I finish talking. Thank you so much for watching, I hope maybe that this spot might be good if you decide to go and try some calling. And uh, yeah, thank you very much.